वेलकम फ्रेंड्स टू माई चैनल इन दिस वीडियो आई विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द टाइम मैनेजमेंट एंड द अप्रोच दैट यू शुड हैव वाइल यू आर एंसरिंग इन योर सी एस आई एग्जाम बिकॉज दिस इज द लास्ट वीक बिफोर योर सी एस आई एग्जाम एंड एट दैट मोमेंट यू नीड मोर टू नो हाउ टू एंसर योर क्वेश्चन इफेक्टिवली एंड हाउ टू यूटिलाइज द थ्री आवर्स ऑफ योर एग्जाम वेरी इफेक्टिवली बिकॉज you already practiced the question and uh, the discussion of question answer will go uh, will goes uh, as it is going but at that moment you should uh, the approach of answering is more important for you so as you know i appeared two times in the csi exam june and december and these are the numbers you can uh, uh, see what i got in this two exam so in the june exam i got only about 93 but in the december i got 147 now it is not like that i studied nothing in the june and i studied very hard for the december exam it is exactly not actually i read more uh, effectively in the june exam because i had uh, almost one month before the exam but i had only one week before the december exam but it is the experience and the time management which i have learned from the previous net exam that helped me to improve my uh, time management skill in the next june exam uh, sorry december exam and they, that gave me this 147 marks you can see uh, i got 95 in part c whereas i i got 51 in part c for the june exam so uh, who are appearing for the csi net exam first time for them this video is very important because they have uh, they doesn't have any experience uh, that how to utilize the time or how to approach your question paper uh, who who had appeared once they know little bit about that but i will uh, share you the tips and tricks and uh, give you the advice that how can you maximize your marks for your csi net exam by utilizing this 3 hours and uh, with a good approach so the first thing that you should understand is you should focus more on part c because if you can gather uh, above 80 from part c that will be very beneficial for you because you can see this 51 marks which i got from part c this is Uh, the main uh, culprit for the disaster of my uh, net exam in june uh, whereas uh, in the december i got 95 you can see these numbers are not much different 30.5 44 and uh, 9.58 they are quite similar but this makes the difference this part c marks and why this is so important because this net, uh, net exam is slightly high level exam so in this case if you uh, don't have very good knowledge of the subject you cannot answer most of the questions okay now uh, there are very few students who are uh, equally good in organic inorganic and physical for most of the people only one subject uh, is strong for them now in the part c you have 60 questions okay out of which you have to answer only 25 so Uh, among the 60 question almost there is a 20 20 20 division from inorganic organic and physical so here you have 20 questions from your strongest part that you can answer and you have to find only five questions from the other subjects now that means uh, to answer all 25 questions from part c is not that much uh, difficult you can do that but if you can manage uh, at least uh, 20 questions because uh, if you can manage 20 question you will get 80 that is also enough for you but your uh, target should be more than 20 and uh, for that you have to uh, and in this case the uh, most uh, bonus point is that you can do almost 20 questions from your uh, strongest part now all 20 questions from your strongest part you cannot answer uh, obviously but you can do at least 15 questions from that and you have uh, remain uh, you are remained with 40 more questions from the other subject which you are not that much comfortable but as you have studied for 5 years you can do some of the questions and from this 40 questions you have to do just 5 questions so that that so that is quite easy for you so this is why you have to focus more on part c now uh, when we come to part b 
here you have 40 questions according to the new uh, new uh, structure of the question paper you have 40 question out of which 35 you have to answer and uh, here also if you divide the question papers among organic inorganic and physical you have uh, almost 30 13 questions from each part okay and here you can do maximum uh, 25 to 30 answer okay you have to do 35 but to answer 35 uh, questions it is very difficult maximum you can do 30 questions or um, uh, it is common that people can do 25 25 is enough, enough if you can do 25 questions from here you can get 50 marks okay you can see 50 marks you can get if you can only answer 25 but that is also difficult because you can see to answer 25 questions you have to do uh, 13 from your strongest part and another 12 from the part which uh, you are not that much comfortable so that is why to do good uh, score from uh, part b is difficult for us now how can you uh, uh, troubleshoot that problem so if you can manage more marks from part c then your pressure of answering part b is uh, lower and that's why if you can manage only for say uh, 15 questions if you can do only 15 questions from part c uh, part b as you can see i uh, did almost uh, 22 questions uh, that that's why i got 42 obviously i did some uh, mistakes and negative marks out there but uh, effectively i did 22 questions and i got 42 but if you can do 15 from there you can get 30 marks so 80 plus 30 you have 110 and now you have to just uh, gather 10 marks from your general aptitude section and then you can get uh, 120 and jrf cutoff never goes beyond 120 so you can easily get jrf if you follow this strategy you have to do only 10 marks from your general aptitude and for that you have to do only five questions and that most of you can do because uh, many people are very good in general aptitude now uh, let us uh, see how you have to spend your three hours for these three parts so i will suggest you uh, when you get the question paper don't go for general aptitude and part b always start from part c because it is the it is heaven for you it is the most scoring part of the question paper so uh, you have 3 into 60 that means uh, 180 uh, minutes for your overall exam now uh, if you are good in general aptitude then you can uh, you can keep 30 minutes for that or if you are not good then uh, 15 minutes is enough but i am taking consideration of 30 minutes so subtracting 30 minutes from here you have 150 minutes now this 150 minute you have to utilize uh, for your part c and part b so now for part b if you want to answer to uh, let's say 20 questions or let's say uh, 25 questions you want to answer from part uh, b so uh, for each question you should uh, give two minutes and that will take 50 minutes from your total time so now you are left out with 100 minutes you can see you have left out with 100 minutes okay so this 100 minutes you have to utilize for your part c and you can see you you have to answer 25 questions from part c so you can uh, you can uh, have four minutes for each each question now obviously there will be some questions which are common to you and which are very easy from part c because uh, they ask in part c like uh, uracil uh, uracil is present either dna or rna this type of question they ask so there will be many questions which you can answer within a minute so in average you have four minutes for your part c and that is more than enough okay so if you utilize this 100 minutes for your exam uh, you can have a very good chance of getting uh, good numbers now uh, i am not uh, telling you to utilize all these 100 minutes you can use 90 minutes because you have to uh, keep some minutes for the revision so this revision part is very important okay revision means if you answered something you cannot erase it but revision means uh, when, uh, in some cases what happens is that you see the question you know I can do it I will do it later but uh, if you don't revise the whole question paper at the end of the exam uh, when you out uh, come out from your exam hall you see that I although I marked for that I didn't answer 
same thing happened for me for the june exam i have i marked in the question paper very uh, many questions i marked and i thought i answered it but when i come out from the examination hall the waiver sheet i found that i didn't answer that so that is when you are appearing for the first time this type of mistakes happens so you have to be very careful for it and you have to take almost uh, keep almost 10 minutes for your revision now this is the time management uh, strategy for your csi and net exam so what i was telling is that so you should start from part c so first go through all the question papers no not go through all the question papers first go to the part c and uh, find your strong area for example you are good in organic so start from organic if you are good in physical so start from physical because and uh, you will see that there are many if you, if your preparation is good you will see that there are many questions more than 25 questions you can answer effectively and uh, you have to now you have to choose the questions effectively because there may be some questions uh, which you can answer but that will take more time and there may be some other question which will uh, which again you can answer but it will take less time so you have to choose that questions which will take less time because time is very important factor for this type of competitive exams so you shouldn't uh, uh, let's say you are very good in organic and but organic questions are such that you should um, devote more time for that whereas the you are not that much good in physical chemistry but there are questions on physical chemistry which are easy and you can uh, do it uh, effectively within very short time so don't uh, in this case it is no, uh, no one will see uh, that you are uh, answering from your uh, preferred part or the part which you love uh, at the end of the exam you have to get marks so don't uh, put emotion in this type of exam that i am uh, i love organic chemistry so i have to do from organic it is not like that if you can do uh, questions uh, from uh, the part which you are not strong but it is saving your time go for that so that means you have to first approach from this part c and uh, first do that questions which you are sure about the answer okay so uh, let's say you did 15 questions which you are almost sure that this will be the right answer then after that you can skip to part b because uh, you, let's say it takes your uh, 50 minutes to answer uh, 15 questions or 40 minutes to answer 50 15 questions and you are left out with another 50 40 to 50 minutes for uh, the part c so keep that 40 or 50 uh, 40 or 50 minutes aside and jump to part b now again uh, do the questions which you are sure that i can uh, i know this uh, problem and i can answer this effectively this is the right answer so do part b and here again you let's say you can uh, do only 15 questions so then again come back to part c and try to troubleshoot that problems which you feel that i can do but it is not sure about that so you have to put more time on that type of questions and uh, for, for example when you have to do some mechanism type question uh, some conceptual mechanisms or uh, let's say some numerical type questions that will take some more time so you have to uh, put more time on that type of things so this is how you have to approach now when all the part b and part c questions which you can do you did all that then go to your general aptitude that is part a section because uh, general aptitude questions are not chemistry questions and uh, it is the test of your general knowledge your intelligence your iq so not all of you will be comfortable with that for you can see i am not comfortable in general aptitude section i got only 8 marks but that doesn't matter this uh, has no effect on my overall performance because i did uh, good uh, enough questions from the chemistry section and i will always suggest you to focus more on chemistry if you do general aptitude good that is a big bonus point uh, one of my friend got 30 out of 30 on general aptitude it is good if if you can do general aptitude it is very good but you should always focus more on your uh, chemistry question so this is how you can uh, manage the time uh, of 300 uh, three hours time uh, to do effectively the questions now let us come what are the frequently done mistakes in this type of exam so for example uh, you may have some question which you uh, just just by looking you uh, think that it is a common question a common question you know the answer without reading the questions question effectively you uh, put a answer uh, or you tick 
some answer so this is a very bad mistake you you shouldn't do it because in the previous net exam there was a question on particle in a box system so they asked that what is the order of energy difference between uh, uh, between the energy of first uh, ground state and the first excited state or particle in a 1d 2d and 3d box and the same type of question came in the previous uh, sorry uh, uh, I forgot the year, it may be 2016 or 14. That what is the energy dif uh, order of the energy difference between ground state and the first excited state? And in this case, they gave ground uh, gr uh, first excited state and second excited state. So while uh, I look at the question, I didn't uh, read the full question. I thought that it is a common question and I uh, um, uh, take that answer which I knew. So this is a very bad mistake. If you do this type of mistake, you will lose your. Uh, uh, marks uh, by your own okay so you shouldn't do that if you if it looks like that you get common question then also uh, read the question very carefully because reading a question will at most take 20 to 25 seconds so that has na nothing uh, effect on your uh, overall performance because it is it is good for you to read a question paper effectively and the instruction manual that what uh, uh, what number of questions you have to do because one of my friend is he was very good but he didn't follow the instruction and uh, he uh, just uh, was doing uh, or sticking the question paper he did all the part b and then he uh, had uh, has nothing uh, he has no time for doing part c so this type of mistakes you have to avoid next uh, it comes to the factor that in some cases you will have confusion that whether uh, it will be option a or option b so uh, I will advise you to don't do that, that, that type of questions because you have negative marks in this exam and uh, negative marks is very dangerous. Okay, if uh, you do a lot of answers but due to negative marks you lose all. So you it shouldn't uh, happen with you and that's why if you are comfortable with uh, other answer, other questions do that. Don't uh, do uh, go for a question which is confusing. But again, if you uh, let's say uh, you see that you are getting only 90 marks uh, then you can uh, check your luck you can uh, try your luck because uh, 90 question is not giving you LS or JRF so uh, then you can uh, do a trial that let uh, just uh, when you are confusing for two, two uh, uh, options you can apply your logic and you can tick that uh, okay it may be the answer and if you if you do the right answer you will get marks so that is okay but uh, let's say you are getting 110 and then uh, you are thinking that okay I will do that answer if I get uh, uh, another four marks I will get more um, good rank don't don't do that if you are getting 110 to 115 then don't go for any risk okay you have plenty of time for appearing this CSI net exam so uh, it is not like that this is the la last and final chance you have to do whatever you want not like that first secure your jrf or ls and then go for uh, once again no, no one will stop you so uh, i think these uh, advices will help you a lot for answering your uh, question uh, uh, answering your questions in the csir exam and if you have any further query you can let me ask in the comment section i will obviously reply you and if you want uh, any further video on this type of topics you can let me know and uh, if you are new in this channel you can subscribe my channel for getting more videos like that best of luck for all of you for your upcoming csi exam uh, thank you for watching